Maybe you're the first time at Mount Vernon. But at the end of the service today, I'm going to invite you to make a decision about who Jesus is, just like these two men on that Emmaus Road had to that day. Because you see, the Savior's coming after us, and he's coming after you and me. How many of you have made that decision to receive Christ today? You know who he is. You've made that decision. You've come to that time in your life. I want you to keep it in the back of your head, though, what it felt like not to know that, to be searching, to be lost, because that's what these two guys felt that day. And let me praise God for the last service. We had a young man, Juan, who came up who got saved last, during the last service, and I praise God for that. He'd been walking for nine months at this church and gave his life to Christ this morning and came up and, and showed himself tears in his eyes that he had made that decision, and I just thank God for that. And I pray that there's someone in here that this is your day. Paul says that today's the day of salvation. There is no other. Luke 24, verse 13. Now the same day, the two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that happened. You know, we were talking about that seven-mile walk. You know, the disciples were waiting in Jerusalem because Jesus had said when he rose from the dead, now they didn't realize at the time that they were to stay put, that the Spirit of God was going to come and empower them to be able to carry on what he had carried on. But these two guys were retreating. They were getting out of Dodge. They were getting out of town. Because you see, if you were a Christian, that day, that third day that Jesus' body was gone, it wasn't over for you. Because those Roman soldiers and the Jewish leaders, they were looking for Christians. It wasn't over. They were going to squash this out completely. And even though Jesus' body was gone, they weren't producing a body. They were mad about that. Because the word was getting out that he was who he said he was. See, today in the news cycle, it lasts for one or two days, right? When a good story comes, they run it over and over and over. Internet, Twitter, Facebook, television, computer. If, if it's a great story, it might last for seven to ten days, and then it's over. We're on to the next story. But if Jesus were around today, that story would have lasted for three years because he was a hot story, because he was healing people, raising people from the dead, forgiving people's sins, claiming to be who? the Son of God. I got a feeling entertainment tonight, CBS and the rest of them would have been following his every move. And you can imagine that when that tomb was found empty that day, the news was getting out quick. And these two guys got out of town because their perception that day was that of disappointment. So they were talking about it as they were taking this walk. Remember, Jesus was brutally beaten, mocked, crucified, buried. They were leaving the scene with little hope. They turned what should have been a great day of victory into defeat. But before we start judging them about why they didn't get it, we need to look at ourselves. Because how many times in our Christian walk have we turned on God? Have we emotionally gone the other way when we knew the truth to be what it was, but decided to do the opposite? Where we decided to turn from the truth instead of following what we knew to be right because our emotions were telling us different. You know what's great about emotions? They feel right, but they're wrong. Because when they're not based upon truth, we have trouble. And in this world today, as Christians, we have to be based upon truth. Truth is what we have on our side. So in their human perspective, they were getting out. They, were, they, were, they, they could have run, for all we know, but they were walking down that road with no real answers, no peace, lost and confused with no hope. See, we're all on a journey for truth. We're all on a journey for purpose in life. And see, as Christians, we need to realize that we're surrounded by coworkers, friends, family that are on this mission to find purpose for their life. And they're filling it up in all sorts of different ways because everybody has a heart-shaped void and it can be filled up a number of ways through pleasure, fame, fortune, money, sex, drugs, standing, whatever it is. But we all know that the only thing that's gonna take up that hole that, and that loss that people feel is Jesus Christ. And we have that answer. The gospel is the most powerful message in the world. Don't forget it. And this day, these two guys were going to find that out. I have four points today that I want you to remember. The first one is sometimes our own selfish plans and strategies keep us from recognizing who Jesus is in our life. Isn't that true about pride, right? It really is at the crux of every one of our sins thinking that we know it all, thinking that we can do it ourselves, thinking that even with Christ, we got it under control. Well, these two guys that day, they didn't have it under control. They didn't have a feeling for who Christ was. They had forgotten what they knew, and they were running from the scene. 
Verse 15, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. All right, picture this, right? We're taking a walk, about a two-hour walk to seven devils, just you and a friend. A stranger comes along to join you in that walk. And it says here that as they walked along, Jesus made himself physically present, but they didn't recognize him. And you know, Mary didn't really recognize him either at the tomb. Several people didn't recognize him at first. So before we judge these guys about being able to recognize them, let's just talk about this. How many of you have lost someone close to you or someone that you loved that you went to a funeral? Well, just, you've left the funeral. Later on that day, you're going to dinner. You walk out of the restaurant and there's your buddy who just died coming to have dinner with you. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't know if I'd recognize my friend either. They thought it was all over. They saw him die on that cross. They saw it finished. And they, weren't real, they didn't know where, he'd went, where, he, where he was, what happened. But Jesus has different plans for these two guys and different plans for the over 400 that he saw in the 40 days in his resurrected glorified body. He shows himself to be alive because he wants to prove to his followers that this is the glorified resurrected Savior. He's teaching his disciples just like us about what relationship and ministry to all believers is. And in this case, he's ministering to these two men. He's showing his commitment, his availability, 